Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for being here. Today we're going to go over, we're going to talk about a handful of different videos that are actually on YouTube right now, show you some dangerous situations that you could potentially get your tractor in and how to avoid those, you know, and this is not to disparage or talk bad about the folks that posted these videos at all because I give them credit for putting them out there. However, there's a lot of you out there watching that are first time tractor owners that you don't know any better. And so having a visual lets you see what kind of danger you could put yourself in if you get yourself into one of these situations. Okay, first video we're looking at here is from Bad Chad, all right? And it uh, looks like he's got a good channel. <laughs> and from the sounds of his video, if you watch the entire thing, this isn't the first time that uh, he's put himself into a, a dicey situation with his Kubota. So this is an older Kubota. I think it shows a model here at, at some point, but he's lifting up an engine with the front end loader, chaining it onto the bucket, all right? It's a pinned on bucket, so, you know, that's pushing the load out further, all right? So the, the closer you are to the loader frame, the more stable it's gonna be. The more weight you can lift, the more stable it's gonna be as well. So the further out, the more kind of wonky it can get. Now he does have a, uh, looks like a concrete, oh, what is that, a concrete filled bucket on the back. Now for this smaller tractor though, he actually has to lift the loader pretty high in the air, you know, because he's got that chain uh, kind of hanging down a little bit on the bucket, has to be able to get that that engine off the off the ground as well. So he has to lift this loader a decent ways in the air. Now you can see he's going slow. That's a good thing. Always go slow with the loader, but you're gonna see where the problem starts is when he starts to turn his tires. That's a dangerous thing. When you have your loader in the air, a lot of ballast weight in the back or not, when you start to turn with a load way up that high, bad things can and will happen. Here he goes, tips it right over. Now, fortunately, you can see what happened here. You can see that the, the load shifted, right? And the, the, the engine hit the ground. So that took off a lot of that force, a lot of that weight that was pulling it down. And so it didn't have a far to drop, right? And so this tractor didn't completely tip over. It also helped with the fact that he's on perfectly level ground. I mean, there's, there's no hills involved or deeper ruts or holes for him to fall into that could have completely flipped the tractor over. Now, something else to pay attention to is the fact that he does not have his seatbelt on and he does have a, a ROPS bar that's up. I don't think this ROPS bar even doesn't look like it folds anyway. So in reality, you want to have your seatbelt on in this situation because it keeps you tucked in that operator station if you do roll over. You know, he kind of climbs off the tractor, but if that tractor continued to roll over like it was on a hillside, well, then the tractor would probably crush him because he'd be falling off on the low side, the tractor would then roll over on him. So that's a another point to take away from this video too. And you can see we wind up with two guys on that far side of the tractor on the left side holding it down essentially you got what 400 pounds there of ballast on that side holding it down his ballast weight is up in the air you can see his three point is raised about as high as it can that maybe doesn't make a huge difference but lower that thing down lower that that three point weight down as low as you can so it's not dragging on the ground but lower your center of gravity overall otherwise you're just raising your center of gravity by doing that so those are my initial takeaways from that video if you have something else to add a safety comment or concern then leave a comment down below. Let's move on to the next one. This video was a bit of clickbait because it says flipping over a tractor up a hill. Now this gentleman did not flip, fortunately, but I think watching this, you can see how repeatedly his front tires, he's going straight up a hill, his front tires repeatedly come off the ground, all right? Now there's a chance, he looks like he has a box blade on the back of his machine. There's a chance that if things went well, that box blade would kind of top out, not bottom out, but top out on the three point and not let him flip any further back. Kind of like how the backhoe frame did on a previous video we showed you that stopped and prevented the tractor from flipping further backwards. Nonetheless, I would never be doing this with my tractor. I would back up this hill, and that's a recommended practice, back up the hill, all right? Make sure you're in four wheel drive if you have that available because that will then give you power to the front axle, give you stopping power too, and make it a lot safer to operate. But back up the hill, or those rear drive tires, those are doing most of the work. And so you'll see this in, man, there's a lot of these um, um, Indian farmers that love to post all sorts of crazy things that they do with their tractors. And they're constantly doing like wheelies on them and everything else. And uh, they'll have hay wagons tied to the back of it. And you see these things flip over backwards. You see them 
they ha kind of have uh, safeties in place on some of their trick tractors, so to speak, to prevent that from happening too. But super dangerous situation there. Always back up those hills. Now this one here is a bit crazy, all right? I don't know if this gentleman was uh, used to using this tractor or not, but he quickly lost control and rolled it right over on him. There's no information on whether or not he was injured or not, I have no idea. But you can see on a gear drive tractor, now this is something, one reason I've talked about before that potentially hydrostatic tractors are safer than gear drive tractors, right? They're well, I believe what happened with this guy is that he put it into a higher gear. It took off faster than expected. It appears it had split brakes as well. I would assume that it had split brakes. Maybe they weren't tied together, maybe they were, but I think he only pushed one brake and it locked up one tire, spun really quick, going at a higher speed, lost control. He had too many things going on, too many functions, and lost control and spun and flipped this tractor. In the blink of an eye, this entire video was 17 seconds long. You can, and, and half of it, he's just backing up slowly. So it happens in the blink of an eye. You know, in a hydro machine, I say maybe that's safer because you take your foot off the gas or the, the accelerator or the reverse pedal, either one, and the machine stops. Unless you're on a hill, it's gonna move forward. But in a gear drive, you have to push in a clutch to get it to, to take it out of gear, you know, or, you know, push the brake on top of that. You gotta do more things. You have to be able to think quicker, I guess is my point. And so, um, you know, that's, that's up for debate, but that's just one potential case of where a hydro machine may be a safer option. You still gotta be a good operator either way. I'm not discounting that. Uh, but if you, can, if you can add in redundancies on your safety levels or on your safety features, safety, what's the word I'm looking for, Chris? Well, you know, yeah, I mean, a checklist or whatever it is. If you have multiple safeties, layers of safeties in, in, in place, kind of like on how aircraft do and other systems do, where if one system breaks, there's another system that's in place to account for that. And so you'd have to have multiple failures across multiple systems in order for an accident to happen. It's slipping my mind right now. I tell you, old age is a, is a bugger. Okay, next up here is a gentleman that I believe actually um, follows my channel. And I, I, I feel like I've done some business with this, with this guy. And, and so again, he, he actually has a, a short initial video showing how his 1025R flipped over and then he's got a longer recovery video as well. Um, and I, again, I wanna reiterate the fact that I don't think any of these guys are stupid, right? I think that these are accidents, accidents just happen. And the more that we can talk about this, the more new viewers that are here, the more new tractor owners that are here, I'm gonna keep doing it. And that's just an important thing that I, something I feel obligated to do and to share and to try to prevent as many deaths or severe injuries as possible in the industry. It's just something small that I can do. So uh, this guy though, you can see, in my opinion, what happened, I would hate working on terrain like this. It's, a, it's a, almost like a creek bottom area. You can see it's very, very uneven terrain. There's ruts, there's little mounds, all sorts of uneven stuff. And for a little tractor like a, like a subcompact in this 1025R, super easy for a turnover rollover situation to happen and that's exactly what occurred here not only is the ground the grade itself sloped but then you have all these potholes and pockets and everything else just compounding that effect and if you look closely with the tractor rolled on its side you can see the loader is raised up in the air uh, with a bucket perhaps uh, the bottom of it about as high or nearly as high as the top of the hood okay so it's it's up there a ways um, his rear blade also appears to be raised up a bit as well. So when you're on uneven terrain, this is why we talk about keeping your, your attachments as low as possible. It's okay. If my attachment occasionally scrapes the ground, maybe I'll raise it up an inch or two, but it's just dirt, right? And it's just a piece of steel that's on your bucket or a grapple or a rear blade or whatever it is. I can deal with that way more than I can deal with my tractor rocking back and forth and then getting to that tipping point where it's too late to save it. And that's exactly what happened here. So this is where ballast weight, where wheel spacers, where the rim guard inside your tires, wheel weights, anything that you can put on there to lower your center of gravity, to widen the width of your machine. We talk about how you can flip the wheels on most tractor wheels as well. So you can have a narrow and a wide position. So do everything in your power to be stable width-wise, all right? Not just front to back, so when you're using the loader, you have a lot of weight on the back, but width as well, all right? So again, these are all examples 
We keep talking about it, but guess what? It just keeps happening. Okay, last video for you here. Now, I've been in a spot like this as well, all right? You kind of get into a, we can see that guy's working in kind of along a ditch, edge of a field, tall grass there. It's hard to see where the, the slope drops off. It needs to get this thing pulled out. It looks like he's got some other machines or enlisted the help of some others to uh, help drag his tractor out of there. So I, you know, be careful with that. Hang on, couple things. Be careful with those chains breaking and snapping. I, I, I see him in kind of the line of fire for, uh, for some of these chains snapping and breaking. So be careful of that, first of all, because you, we've all heard of the story of people getting killed when those straps or when chains break free and snap and, and go flying back at a machine or back at uh, an operator somewhere. So be careful of that. But the other big issue I has is once he starts putting his, he's trying to hop off the tractor and putting his foot while it's moving, almost stepping on it. I get that this tractor is, is going super slow, right? But he is, his foot is almost repeatedly getting bound up in that tractor tire there. To me, that was just, I was waiting for something bad to happen there. And that is how that does happen, okay? Is doing something that you think is not a big deal, right? That's that, this, those lapses in judgment that you think it, eh, this is going slow, nothing big is gonna happen, but that's when a, a piece of clothing gets snagged on that tire tread and drags you down with it and then rolls over on top of you. That's when your foot gets caught awkward and you get flipped off the tractor. That's when all those situations happen. So just don't do it. I, I think he was trying to keep the tractor from rolling over the other way, but there was two machines chained to it. That's a big old tractor and it looks like he weighs about 170 pounds dripping wet. I don't think his leverage, putting the weight on a foot over this way was gonna be doing a whole lot of good anyways. He probably didn't need to be on the tractor at that point. So a lot of different ways there that could be super dangerous situations on your tractors and again, it's, the number one leading cause of death in agricultural related incidents on, on farms, okay? So tractor rollovers, this, this, these, they're dangerous tools. They're, they're safe if you have respect for them and operate them with common sense. And the more you see these videos, the more it's gonna register when you're on your tractor of what not to do and how you can prevent that from happening to you. So we're big on safety. We're sponsored by RimGuard for good reason. That's the cheapest form of ballast weight too. Put that stuff inside your tires. You don't have to worry about it. It's just there all the time. It's a great start. You generally need more ballast weight on top of that. That's generally not enough to be good counterweight when you're using the front end loader. So get yourself wheel weights on there. Get yourself a weight bracket with suitcase weights. Get the, the hitch hangers if you have a Spico quick hitch. Check out the solutions that we have to offer on our website. We ship these things nationwide as well. And if you're looking for something else, maybe you need a grapple or a snow pusher or a rototiller, pallet forks, whatever it might be. Well, we carry all those tools as well. So we'd love to earn your business. Shoot us an email. We wanna make sure you get the right tools that you need the first time around. So we want to help you pick those out. The, the, the last thing I wanna hear is, man, this thing's too big or doesn't fit or whatever. Let us help you right up front, goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.